I think obviously culturally the fans are going to be different you know in each country you go to for me I was surprised in a good way of you know just how many turn out you know, I think sometimes you see games from the Middle East and not necessarily that many people there and I think Saudi's the exception you know it's there's a big following over here and you know it was a nice surprise and something that's you know enjoyable you want to play in front of uh, a lot of fans and you know packed arenas so you know in the UK Obviously in Liverpool, it's quite a small city, two big teams there that you know you do get noticed a lot. It's one of those clubs where I think you don't feel exactly how big it is until you're in it. Growing up, I was a Liverpool fan. My mum's born in Liverpool, so you know, I was sort of, from her side of the family, pushed me to be a Red. And yeah, you know, it was my dream to go there and at a time where possibly I could have said no to it in terms of I was playing at Middlesbrough as number one and I'd been fighting for a long time to get to that position but the pull to go there was, you know, it's too much and um, something I definitely don't regret doing, going there. But once you're inside it, you realise just how much pressure there is, how big the club is. We go on pre-season and, you know, 50, 60,000 people turned up for training. Um, 90,000 for a pre-season -pre game against a local side, you know, it was, it was insane and you know, just rows of people turning up at the airports when we landed, you know, things that you don't expect. I mean, obviously at that point we were on such a, you know, a crazy ride, you know, Brendan had created a, a good squad that it almost got too big, even for the experienced players, you know, the likes of Stevie, you could, you could see it in his body language, how much it meant, especially coming towards the end of that season, just how big it got. And unfortunately, yeah, when it came down to it, um, we didn't quite have enough to, to get it done, but even to finish second after the period that the club had been in was a big achievement as well. I think Allison's massive for the club, um, you know, mentally, for everyone really, you know, the fans feel calm having him there, he's, you know, he's a big presence, he's a big name, but definitely having Allison back, you know, he's himself and Van Dyke have been, you know, the, the key for Liverpool's kind of uh, quick rise, if you like, you know, Champions League finals. The year before they got there and didn't really look up to it, and the following year it, it was, you know, a completely different story and there were two players different, so I think that says a lot. And yeah, you know, for a club, I think you always want calm and composed goalkeepers and defenders and they got both. It's that funny period, a lot of the players have left for one reason or another and there's not too many left now that were in the squad when I was there, but the ones that are there, still the goalkeeping coaches there, John Afterberg, so I keep in contact with all of them and some of the guys that are behind the scenes as well, so yeah, a, a club that's obviously, like I said, I was a supporter, so close to my heart.